Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chop Talk. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here. It's the Irish princess herself. It's Melball. How you doing, Melball? Is it because of the shirt? Yes. 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 Okay, good. Good. Because I guess technically the bread I was eating was Irish also. <laughs> I actually thought I was going to be the bread princess. Oh, that was a pleasant surprise. I'm doing great today, Andre. I had a really great leg workout today, despite being not able to go into my little hidey hole that I like to usually go in. You know that long board that I've been trying to balance on? Mm -hmm. Guess we did it for three minutes today. Uh, somebody else. Ah, rude. Yes, so I guessed. Rude. But, I, but I'm probably right. Somebody else probably did do that today. Probably, but we didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Andre. <laughs> oh, well, work with me, not against me, sir. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. Tired. I've been sleeping well the last couple of nights. So same, it's been an interesting same. couple of days. I literally about an hour ago I fell asleep and woke up about 20 minutes before I jumped on here to set this all up to do everything. So <laughs> Hey, yeah. at least you woke up. Uh that is true. That is true. I fell asleep playing on my switch. I mean, when your body's tired, your body's going to tell you it's tired. Time to take a nappy nap. Yeah, it's true. Oh. Still tired. And I got to go out. I got to go out in, uh, in about two hours. So, yeah. Someone wanted to come say hi. Oh, it's the Koji. Or maybe he's just looking for breadcrumbs. Is that what you're doing? No, he's all about maybe. that bread club, yo. I mean, given his namesake, I would hope so. Hey. <laughs> uh, we get starting out to be, we're going to be talking about some fun wrestling. Some yeah. wrestling we checked out on the weekend. We were, we were talking cautiously about this show before going to it. Yeah. We, so concerned. We, we had hesitations. Going into the show, we had three matches announced. One of them we were a little iffy on just due to the initial match. Um mm -hmm in the feud uh the other one we didn't another one we didn't get and the third mm -hmm. one was a tag team extravaganza that i had a great time watching so yeah it turned out it turned out to be a really good show except for one match so yeah that's that's what i was gonna say D despite the absence of some regular um names in here like um Eva Lawless, um, Sean Martins, Kamikaze, Crudel, Cody Mack, even our beloved Dean Jack O'Connor. Dean Richter wasn't there? Dean Richter Dean wasn't Richter. there? Dean yeah. Like, despite some of our personal favorites not being in attendance, the show was surprisingly solid. And we had some really fun little surprises and debuts, reviews, good times all around. Yeah, I thought it was a really fun show overall because, like, top mm. to bottom, except it directly in the middle, I had a great time with everything. And then the stuff directly yeah. in the middle, I just went, okay. And I kind of paid attention, but went and got food and did other stuff. And yeah, I mean, I'm, took a I note or two. kind of think about it. I think it'll be interesting. Well, my opinion is kind of on the fence on this one. It's a teeter totter. But yeah, yeah let's well, get into it, man. Yeah, so we're going to get here talking RCW uh, Defiance. But before we do that, we're going to defy you. We're not going to defy you, sorry. And we're going to talk to you because we want to thank each and every one of you. I, my word, I have my wording wrong. I'm, I'm bad at this. <laughs> I'm bad at transitions. I want to thank you all so very much for tuning in here to watch us on Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk. If you or on Backbreaker Video, uh, please give us a like. Oh, we're not. We're not live. We're not there with this show. It's only the Japanese content. Come on. <laughs> so I, I want to want to thank each and every one of you. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share us up to your friends, family, and all those great people who make their own bread. And don't forget to uh, uh, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello, and I also want to thank our friends over at A Plus Productions for, for simulcasting all of our stuff in audio, all of our Japanese wrestling content in audio form. You can check them out at A Plus Productions on Facebook and A Plus Productions.com. Mm -hmm. See, see what I did? Mm -hmm. see? I see what you did there. See, see what I did? Yeah, yeah. 
we're gonna get into it. We're not gonna defy you any longer and talk about RCW Defiance. See, that that was better. That was better. That was significantly better. Good job. <laughs> Gold star. Bad at this. Uh, I've been doing this for two for two years with you and ten years almost overall between podcasting and stuff. And you think I'd be better at it by now, but I mean, you would, but like you know, you do you do pretty good. I oh, don't. We kick it off the show with Melba's favorite wrestler in the world. It's an RZW North love American Championship life. match. The, the love of Mel's life, Mitch Clark taking on Dangerous. He is Dangerous. Oh, oh yay! Man. And we got our violent tip touches before and after the match. And after he violent tip touches, another guy got up and reached for the violent tip touch as he was coming around. And then and he that, just yeah. ignored him and went into the ring. I was like, yes! <laughs> it was so good. Not a violence. And we also uh, got tip touches from other rads tonight. Uh, in Rich, Rich King night. and T.Y. And I got a tip touch from Ben. As, oh. he, as he randomly oh. walked by me at one point. Oh, we love Ben. And and he even went like this to me, and I went, ooh. And I <laughs> he initiated the tip touch, so. Ooh. 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 Lucky, 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 lucky. The only one we were missing was fucking Larry. Fucking Larry just doesn't come to RCW anymore. Oh. Into this. this was fun. So yeah, Mitch Cars versus Dan Juris. Dan Juris. He's dangerous. He is. He is. I heard what it's my, how my brain works. I heard him introduced <laughs> as Mad Gary. I don't know how I heard that, but it did. I heard Jerry, so like, yeah. <laughs> you heard Jerry. I heard Mad Gary. <laughs> Just... Damn it, Lee. Uh, Had one job. So Dan did get in control early on in the match, but he ends up missing a spear into the corner with Mitch dodging. He ends up spearing the post, and then his foot, his leg goes over the rope, and Mitch just grabs the middle rope and just starts shaking it, just like crotching Dan over and over again. It was so funny. Uh, oh, I love that. That reminded me of like classic ELP used to do that, like Bullet Club ELP. Yep. A uh, beautiful walk around, walking around, delayed suplex by Mitch. I think you came up with a name for it, but I didn't write it down. I can't remember what it was, but yeah. you came up with a name for it. I don't remember. See, this is why I got to write things down. I he know. only gets a two count. Uh, beautiful delayed fisherman suplex by Mitch, too, but again, only gets a two. Did I just call it a violent suplex? No, you, you had a... Had it had a name and it had something to do with the love of your life in it. I don't remember. It, it, it had something to do with the love <laughs> of your life. I don't know. Yeah, I don't that know. sounds like something I would do. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Dan getting this really nice running head scissors to Mitch at one point in this match just looked really smooth. Um, Mitch gets a backbreaker at one point, tosses Dan, and then just he's like hits a backbreaker and just goes mad, just tossing him, and then just sits on him for the pin, but only gets two as Dan reverses into his own pin for two, then gets up and just hits this massive German suplex to Mitch. Uh, later in the match, Mitch uh, gets Dan up top, but he fights him off, and Dan hits a blockbuster off the top rope for two. He then follows that with a standing sliced bread for two. Uh, Mitch fights back, goes for the spindly bindly, or the Ludwig Van Driver, uh, but uh, Dan fights out of it. Mitch does fight fight him, gets him back up on the shoulders, hits that Ludwig Van Driver spindly bindly for the win. Yes. This was a great opener. We kept yeah. talking back and forth through this one. We're like, this is a great opener. It's a great match. Just, just a straight up great traditional wrestling match. I loved it. It's not much I can say on that. That everything that you said, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I thought these two were just solid together. And again, uh, and not to criticize Mitch's last match, but I'm just, I was so happy they opened with this. And yeah. like again, coming off of the last show we saw Mitch on uh, with RCW, that again, not a bad match, but it was just it wasn't as strong as and I think it mm -hmm. was this one was with Dangerous that he had with the MMA, the other MMA guy last time, and just, I, I love this, and it was a perfect way to kick the show off. Mm -hmm. I agree. I really enjoyed Dan. I hope they bring him back. 
Yeah, I, I would love to see him again. I think he worked very solidly in the ring. Absolutely. So we move on to the second match of the night, but it was a promo to begin with. Sid Green makes his way up, making his return for the first time in four months to mm-hmm. RCW. Um, has been out, and he uh, comes out saying he 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 wants to fight. He wants a battle, and he says someone challenge him. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Did we get a challenge? Yes, we did. Making his return to RCW for the first time since I think like 2021, early 2022, maybe. We got pride. Fuck yeah, we did. Oh my God. Pride (laughs) making his return. And we both, we hear the music and it has that siren. And Mm -hmm. it's very similar to Asriel's siren when it goes off. Well, when it first went off, we were like, oh, my God, Pride. And we're like, no, there's no way. There's no way it has to be Asriel. And then it, then the music kicks in, and it's like, oh, it is Pride. And we is both pride. were just like, yes! Oh. And we had just lost our shit for Sid, too, because Sid is a personal favorite of ours as well. Mm-hmm. Couldn't yeah, get any and, better. Yeah, and just, oh, dude, it, I was so excited because it's like, just think of the craziness of, of Sid Greed versus the just sadistic nature of what Pride has become since eliminating Jack from the, from mm-hmm. their mind from their mind. It just holy holy potatoes. Holy potatoes. <laughs> um, so they get into it at the start, and then Pride ends up rolling out at one point, and Sid immediately hits him with a barrel roll toll pay to the floor. Then he sends it back in, and Pride goes rolling out the other side. So Sid in, barrel tope out the other side. It looked insane. That barrel tope that he does is insane. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was great. Such a nice little start to there because he wanted a battle. That's what he got. Yeah. Um, Pride catches Sid running with that like sick kick to the face, that running boot to the face, the mm-hmm. Roger Strong sick kick. Ah. Oh. A straight kick to the mm-hmm. face is, is brutal. He just mounts him and just starts raining down strikes, just forearms and punches and just oh Jesus. Um he ends up taking him sit around the ring, just beating him up outside of the ring. Uh probably gets him back and beating him up, but Sid fights back with a beautiful shotgun drop kick into the corner. Oh gosh, yeah. I got a video of that. Holy shit. The shotgun yeah. drop kicks were on fire tonight too. This was the first one that we got, and we got I think two more in in the matches that came after that. I thought were really really impressive. We'll talk about them when we get there, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, Sid gets this beautiful cradle. He gets something in a cradle, and then hits a flatliner out of the cradle. I was yeah. like, oh, that's different. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, a, and he muscled him like Sid's significantly smaller in size compared to Pride, mm-hmm. but the fact that he could pick him up and just yeet right over there is impressive. Yeah, uh, so uh, Sid goes to the c- corner on the apron, is going for essentially his front flip over the top. In I can't remember what he hits, but it's sort of like the uh. Hangman's move where he flips over the top into the lariat. It's like that. Essentially, it is the lariat. I don't know if it's a lariat or a forearm. I can't remember. But yeah, he goes for that. But uh, the ref, Ben, Ben, the ref, making a little flub here, getting in the way, um, and gets pride the chance to slide to the outside, pulls him to the floor, and just apron bombs the shit out of him with Sid coming down right on his hip. Look just brutal, and I saw Sid wandering later on in his crazy state, and he was looked like he was hobbling a bit, taking this, that shot to the hip. Looked pretty brutal. I mean, hardest part of being right, and day sitting yeah. down on that probably did not feel very good at all. No, so uh, Pride gets Sid in the ropes, hits a rope hung code breaker for two, and he follows it up with the curb stomp for the win. And mm-hmm. I was just over the moon with this match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's funny because, like, everything you mentioned, I actually managed to get little clips of, mm. which is nice because it helped remind me of the match. Um, the one thing I also um, really enjoyed at this point, there was a setup where Pride did his double stomp. You know me and the double stomps. Yeah, I like those a simple but effective move, but that, that double stomp sometimes can be 
underwhelming for me. I'm very critical of Finn Balor's. But what I liked about this one is he didn't just go for like a downed person. Sid was still standing and bent over. He caught him right in the ribs and the impact looks so good. Oh, yeah. So that, good. That stomp is crazy from Pride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's also, there was a lot of banter between these guys, which I thought was really, really nice too, which we didn't get a lot of in the first one. Mitch tends to be a pretty stoic kind of wrestler whereas these guys they were beacon at each other they're interacting with the crowd you could hear pride really getting in on sid um i can't remember what he said to him right before he hit him with the curb stomp but like ever antagonistic i love it love yeah it. you know my hearing i would have i probably would have screwed up whatever he said anyways <laughs> i have it on video i'm sure i could go back and check it but we're not yeah. going to allow it recording yeah, but this this match was just I had a blast watching this match. And 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 the show kept, and the show kept ramping up for me going into the third match, and it was the first of the advertised matches that we were we were we had gotten. And see one of the two actual RCW graphics that we're using on this show. Oh yeah, baby. It is the yeah. rad. It is for the RCW International Tag Team Championships. It is the Rads defending their title. T. Y. Jackson and Rich King defending their titles against uh, D T N Blake Marriott and John John Tavius, dude. I read some of the names correctly on there. <laughs> well, I I was read I, I was reading the Blake his tights and it's I thought it said Mar Marquette, not mm -hmm. Marriott. It, it looked no, like huh, it huh. that's true. That's and true. That's true. The other one I could see Tavius, no problem. It just because mm -hmm. the first names were on the front and it was hard to see. So, but yeah, it, I was very quickly too, so it was very hard to read. Mel, uh, call uh, saying getting some Power Ranger vibes from the from DTN. Yeah. I love yeah. that gear. Oh god, yeah, so professional looking. I, I'm gonna say it, gear of the night for me. Went went to 100%. these guys. Went to these guys. 100%. Went to DTN. I I have to give it there. So this mm -hmm. match, I took a lot of notes and I've uh, trimmed it down. Uh, so uh, Martet gets tossed, or Mar Mariette, I keep, I wrote Martet throughout the entire thing. So, that's, so <laughs> yeah. I was, I was started writing blue and orange, and then until I got their names, but yeah, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Yeah, uh, Mariette tossed over the top to the apron, uh, but by Ty, like it's back dropped over, but then him and. Uh, Octavius do hit a pump kick and Zerguri combo to T.Y. in the corner. It looks so good. Uh, Marriott mm. then follows up with a frog splash off the second rope for two. Again, these two just flow so well. Uh, T.Y. does get a hot uh, the hot tag to... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah, T.Y. gets a hot tag to Rich at one point. He comes in wrecking house. He hits a final beat DDT to Tavius and the Death Valley driver to Marriott for two. Um, Marriott reverses a suplex by Rich and he slides into like an inverted DDT position, goes to lift him, but as he lifts him, Rich turns it around into the same position and follows with his final cut elbow for, for two. Great spot, little spot there. Mm -hmm. Um, Marriott hits a beautiful somersault roll into a double flat ladder to both TY and Rich. Oh, so good. So good. Such a good setup, too. And the way he just floated in, it was just so effortlessly perfect. Yeah, Tavius gets tagged in his wrecking house, hits a Superman punch, just run Superman punches, bang, just, uh, just just out of nowhere to Rich. Fall, and T.Y. Atta starts attacking him, but then Tavius turns the attack of T.Y. into a beautiful cutter for two. Again, just so smooth, man. Yeah, Ugh. so good. Yeah, I... Uh, DTN get dual flatliners, which they turn into dual cross faces, but the rads do roll out of the submissions. It's just, mm -hmm. just, just such great tag team tandem offense from DTN. I was super impressed. Uh, mm -hmm. Tavia gets the Tavius gets a nice blue thunder bomb to Rich for two. Um, uh, there's a tope, there's a tope suicida by Ty to Mar to Marriott on the floor. Um. And then Rich hops up to the top and hits a Rana to Tavius off the top rope. I love that 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 jump by Rich is super impressive. Just a jump super from nice. the ring to the top rope. It's just uh, mm -hmm. and then right into the Rana off the top. Uh, 
Mariette back in after Tavis is taken out. Rich slips out of a brain buster by Mariette and hits his 8-6-7. Driver T.Y. comes off the top to hit the Swanton, and he pins Mariette for the win, and the Rads retain the International Tag Team Championships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something to real quick uh, note at the beginning and the end of the match, we saw sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. On the rad, it was great, really nice. Uh, something I was thinking about earlier, and I was talking with our good friend Astrid about, is that the rats have this like interesting ability to go from company to company, depending on where they are, can be easily interchanged as heel or face. Mm-hmm. And I love that their personalities still say the same, pretty much, mm-hmm. regardless of if they're heel or face. Like we saw Rich being a heel in Onaway. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't give us a tip touch. But no. we got our tip and we, touch. Tonight. And we were right ne- and we were right next to him as he came out too. Mm-hmm. And he ignored mm-hmm. us. Yep. Well, he didn't ignore us. He just didn't give us the tip touch. Yeah, he talked. Anyway. He was like, what are you he's like, what are you doing here? Like like kind of like just criticizing us for showing up. Came to see you, B. What the hell? Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um TY was very interesting in this one for me because I'm used to seeing TY in this picture as he is, just all smiles and giddy and going like throughout his thing, regardless if he's a healer face. He's always that kind of happy personality. Um, when he got that hot tag and he came in, oof, he was mad. Mm-hmm. He he was in business mode. Um, and he came in like a firecracker. My goodness, this was such a fun match. You're right. It just kept getting better and better and better. But like we saw Mariette and Davis yeah. before, right? Uh, yeah, they have been here for, I think I actually missed that show. I realized now. Yeah, they I were in think... that four person scramble tag thing or three, three team scramble something, I feel. Well, they were here because they, they are uh, DTN is actually a trio and the picture I saw, it was them with their third, the third member of DTN. And they were it just, I saw a picture of them from the last time they were here and it was, they were okay. with the, they were with, take a picture of T.Y. Rich and actually Dean Richter and the, the three of them got a picture, but like the entirety of DTN was here at that point. So. Cause, cause there's a, there's a green Ranger too. I don't recall the match. This is what happens when I watch too much wrestling, though. I've been trying to catch up on Mari Gold. Mm, me too. That's fair. Yeah. Very hard lately. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, otherwise, this was a fantastic tag match. I really enjoyed this match. Please bring yeah. these guys back again. Oh, heck yeah. And uh, we moved on to a six person tag. Yeah. Cool boy. <laughs> What the busy? Yeah, I, I I'll I'll give it to the Toxic Juggernauts. They have a great logo. They use their the Simpson Simpsonized versions of themselves, and this one had a third person in the picture, but that person wasn't here. So I put Steven Styles' face on that on that on that Simpsonized person. It <laughs> worked. Tagged. So we have the team of Barricade, Cannonball Kelly, and Tyler Rose with their manager. This tiny little dude named Johnny Two Fingers. Mm-hmm. Taking on the toxic juggernauts of Moses Luke and Tyler James, teaming up with Steven Styles. Mm-hmm. So the funniest part about this match is the ring announcer Lee calling toxic juggernauts toxic jugs. <laughs> Oh, I laughed so hard. Oh, I laughed so hard. Oh, Lordy. Yeah, that was great. (laughs) Yeah, so this was not... I I have, like, a couple notes. Uh, Styles beating up on Tyler Rose. He gets a super wedgie and thumb bums him. Um, Yeah, uh, then they... Then Team Toxic juggernaut styling styles whatever you want to call them jugger jugger juggernauts style knots whatever you want to call them the toxic, toxic style jugger knots. styles yeah the toxic jugger styles there you go uh they beat up on uh on cannibal kelly uh mm-hmm. barricade and cannibal kelly get the advantage they start beating up on uh, tyler james uh, mm-hmm. um 
Styles avoids three corners flashes at one point, and all three members of, of Barricade, Cannibal Kelly, and uh, Tyler Rose end up in the corner. And then uh, he ends up whipping Moses Luke into them in the corner, and then they all yeah. fall down into uh, – my literally wrote, wrote here, uh, the group in the corner – they whips into the group in the corner, and they fall into sex. They fall into Diddy. They fall into Diddy, yeah. It just looked dumb. The end of this match comes. Tyler James is the top rope leg drop to Tyler Rose for the win. Yeah. You know, I've had a lot. I've had a few days to think about this one, and it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. It was. It was. Oh, I've seen. I've seen far worse. Yeah. Um. There was a lot. This was the comedy match of the night. Essentially, this is the match to break up all the seriousness of everything else that's kind of happened up until that point, and that happens after this point. Um, so yeah, I I appreciated it. Um, Tyler Rose worked his butt off in this one with his like his selling, but also he he had some Jesse Youngblood level facials. Like he was very animated, sometimes over animated, and it made the match a lot more fun. Um, that you remember at one point he was sitting there going at people in the corner and just antagonizing them in like that fun little goofy way. And given again the size differential, he was the smallest person in that ring besides his manager. Um, in comparison to everybody else, including what was the top hat guy's name again? Tyler James. Two Tyler's. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not confusing. Um, yeah, I I appreciated uh, Tyler James. He had a really good look overall. I appreciated his in ring persona. I felt he worked very very well. Um, you know, I actually really kind of enjoyed this man. Bless his heart, though. Also, Tyler Rose trying to tag out at one point to barricade. Did you see? He's just sitting there, like reaching, reaching, reaching. Barricade's just sitting there looking at him, like the hell you want. Like, like, I don't want to deal with this. Like, I don't want to deal with this. Holy, just tag out to the porch. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it, 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 there are some funny spots. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but it just was one of those matches that never really got me into it. It just, yeah. I I actually enjoyed it far more than I expected to, especially once I saw like what it ended up turning into with what I thought it was going to be initially. I actually yeah. kind of enjoyed it. Like I said, yeah, it's kind of like that comedy breakup match, which I think I needed at that point. Yeah, I just it, there was no point where I was laughing. That was the only problem with the comedy match. You're supposed to laugh at stuff. I didn't really laugh at anything in this comedy match. Yeah, that is fair. I, I laughed a lot. I laughed more at our jokes than we were making between ourselves <laughs> about about, about certain people. And from uh, some Facebook sleuthing. Uh, there, this, this, this uh, war might have continued the following night between Cannonball Kelly and Steven Styles in a drink mm. in a possible drinking contest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, are we talking Okan Uemura style, or are we just saying that that someone did a live stream from a bar? No, just I just saw a Facebook post about them those two having a drinking contest the night after. So. I'm interested to know who won. I feel like it would be Cannonball Kelly, but I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like Cannonball Kelly could outdrink Steven Styles. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know I don't who know. I bet on in that situation. I don't know. Steven Styles looks like a guy who has like two shots of tequila and passes out. <laughs> I don't think so. I disagree with that statement. <laughs> I just like the, I just like making fun of I just like being a dick to Steven Styles. That's all it is. I mean, keep this up. He's not gonna hire you anymore. No, no, I'm I'm hired by Steven Awasa Chuck, not Steven Styles. Oh, fair. fair. <laughs> I don't I'm a jerk to Steven Styles. See Squiggy I like Squig. Uh, Steven Styles, not so much. <laughs> um, keep shouting. We move we move on to a singles match and is Slammer versus Jay. Jay Spade Slammer comes out, says he missed it, misses all of us. He misses the smell of piss in the the, the smell that Edmonton is, the toilet bowl that we are, or they are, because I'm not from there, and calls uh, the uh, uh, Edmonton the turd that will not flush. I mean, to be fair, the Legion is pretty close to the homeless area of towns. The 
homeless area town is everywhere. It's pretty much the entirety <laughs> of Edmonton now. You know. That's fair. It's uh, fair. So as JJ makes his entrance, he's getting in the ring and posing. He gets lariated by uh, Slammer. Slammer starts beating him up. Uh, JJ does send him out at one point. Hits a rocket leg tope to the floor. Looks mm-hmm. very good. Uh, we had our we had our JJ Spade signs. We were raising them, cheering for JJ. We're big JJ fans over here at Andre yes. Melvin Talk. Um, he, he ends up sending Slammer back in, and Slammer and uh, or Slammer beats him up on the floor after getting hit with a tope. Slammer sends him in. He's posing, and then JJ hits him with another rocket like tope to the floor. Um, they're back inside. Slammer fo- fights back on the end when they're inside. JJ Game Reigns contr- gets back in control, though. Uh, he hits the stinger splash in the corner. Slammer stops our tornado DDT and hits the, uh, I, whatever you want to call it, the boss man slam, the black hole slam, whatever you want to call it. He mm-hmm. hits for two. Slammer just starts beating up on JJ. He gets a rear chin lock. JJ fires up, but Slammer gets him up on a, onto the, gets him up on up, up. Picks him up, but JJ slips down, schoolboys him, but Slammer kicks out. Then he follows up with a choke slam for two. We get to the end of the match. Slammer gets a full Nelson. JJ fights out. Slammer attacks, but JJ fires up. Gets a shotgun. Another shotgun drop kick. Yeah. And that was the second one of the night. They were on fire tonight because that thing was stoof. Yeah, sending him into the corner. And then he slams the Slammer. He goes to the top yeah. rope. But Slammer regain, gets back to his feet, crotches him up top. Slammer follows with the Tower of London, which is that cut that cutter stunner off the, from pulling guy down, and picks him up. F ten for the win. Yeah, that F ten looked nasty too. Oof, because yeah, he sent Did him flying. Because he, so he sent him flying. It is definitely an F ten because he just launched him and sent. Oh him yeah. He got some height on that, and JJ hit the ground hard. Yep. Big yikes. Big yikes. Yep. Big yikes. Um, Big yikes. Yeah, the, the shock and drop kick was what I wanted to, to focus on the most there, because, again, the second one of the night, and it was just freaking fire. And, like, I love seeing is it one of those simple but effective kind of things. Mariah May, and another one who has just one of those beautiful kind of kick you in the front door and out the back door kind of power drop kicks. Absolutely love it. Um, it was interesting to see Slammer again. I, I mentioned earlier, we saw the difference between heel and face between companies or cities or whatever. Slammer kind of wrestled face in Onaway, wrestling heel in Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Um, difference well, um well onaway doesn't smell like a toilet bowl like edmonton does that's why i got i got no retaliation to that i had i don't know what to I, to sure <laughs> <laughs> but like i'm sure in the wrong season it probably smells like cow dung mm. the wind's blowing the right way i don't know i don't know um i find it interesting though um yeah i you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It seems to work for Slammer pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, it makes him very easy to book. It makes him easier to work with when he can just kind of pick one way or the other. So I appreciate that. Um, it's interesting to see him still trying to fire the crowd up, though. Even though he's a he was a heel in this one, he was still trying to get us to chant Slam. Yeah, it was weird. But, you know. I mean, there true. are, yeah, but there's some people out there, you know, who, who just like the heels, right? And they'll chant with him regardless, which we saw. There were some people in the crowd chanting slam. That's true. That's what it is. Yep. So that's why we love wrestling. Wrestling is so subjective because, you know, most of the, the people kind of follow that line. And then there's people like us who like to deviate from that line. Yeah. Just, so, like, this next, just like the next match. And this was the match yeah. that, that shifted on an announced match. It was supposed to be Weston King versus Christian Star on this show. We ended up getting Weston King teaming with Christian Star, being managed by the wonderful Gussie. Yeah. Gussie Jones. Um, taking on Moja Bari and Harlan Abbott. Uh, the AEW tag team reunites tonight. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and this is one where I was cheering for the heels because even Star worked heel tonight. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I was cheering for the heels. It's as simple as that. It's Weston King, Christian Star. I cannot cheer against them. I, that is it's true, up. and they were both dressed like Weston King. Star even had a well, King's original vest and a pair of sunglasses and a razzle dazzle. No, he because remember if you watch Star come out, he came out just wearing his his, his, his yeah, gear, yeah. and then Funny. and then they made him put on an old the the original Weston King shirt, and then mm-hmm. they and. They made him put on the vest, and like Gussie's like doing the vest stuff, the original vest stuff, and then they put the glasses on his face and sent him forward. It was fun. and what a transformation! Yep. <laughs> oh, I, I enjoyed. Oh. I I enjoyed these two. Um, so like again, really good start between uh, Star and Mo. Mo gets that beautiful solid snap suplex on Star for two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star comes back with a springboard Rana to Mo at one point. Harlan Weston are in. Harlan gets a nice head scissors uh, to Weston, then dodges punches from Weston and hits a straight right to the jaw and falls it with a tornado DDT for two. Gussie, on, in the meantime, is on the outside. He's where he's standing. The fans are getting at him, and he steals a fan sign and rips it up. It was uh, Stang, David Stang's sign. Yeah, it was Stang, it was Stanger's sign. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Star, uh, they get Mo into the corner and Mo's seat in the corner. Star with boots, boots to Mo, and then Father with the hesitation drop kick. Yeah. Um, so good. Star and Mo end up running into each other, both going for cross bodies and just crash at center drop and just ah, oh, so good. Uh, Weston hits his beautiful spine buster to Harlan. Yeah, just a little bit after that, oh, so good, so- Mo. Yeah, Mo and Harlan really mastering the blind tags, really taking advantage of it throughout this match. Like, like tag just mm-hmm. quickly tagging it so they come in and attack the the opponent. We're really good at it. Um, and mm-hmm. this match came. Uh, they uh, Mo and Harlan hit a second rope heart, a second rope heart attack to Weston King, but Star comes in super kicking Mo, Harlan and, uh, and Harlan. Weston, Weston and Star then start to tune up the band, and they they go for the double super kick. They get caught, then they get put into dual sharpshooters, and they tap out. And Mo and Harlan get the win. Yeah. 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 It's very interesting because, like, I know, th- like, I I know they were on AEW before, but I hadn't really seen. Mo and Harlan work together hmm. so much so as I've seen them work opposite of each other. Yeah. So this was interesting to see, and they actually worked and flowed very, very well together. As you mentioned, that that the tag that they were able to kind of group together and just kind of make work for them really well. Um I definitely felt that this was a interesting match for Christian Star. Because mm-hmm. there were points in time where you could just see him kind of giggling to himself <laughs> in the corner. Like, what are we doing? It was adorable. But I think this was a fun match for all four of these guys, including Gussie, actually, on the outside, especially with the fan interaction. That can only help better the company overall, because that crowd interaction is what, what a lot of these people come to indie shows for, is that more kind of intimate feel. So I like how Gussie as a manager makes that work really well. We've seen him work really, really well with that at Top Talent as well. We've got that little shimmy jimmy, little booby Eddie Guerrero run in that he did. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed seeing um, Christian in this one. It felt really relaxed for him, like it was effortless for him and like not to say that it wasn't before but you could tell there were certain things that he was almost like not stiff about but kind of like like a little not scared of but like you know what i'm saying there was something that like it wasn't quite there this match he was he wasn't too much in his head i felt i felt that with the people that he was working with he felt very comfortable and very like again everything was very effortless 
for him. Weston is always just a privilege to watch. It's just so fun. It's so good. Like you said, that spine buster. You know, spine busters are one of my favorite moves. Um, aside from the dingle dangle, which is we just so any, nice. We didn't get an even we didn't get one tonight. That's okay. An attempt. We didn't that, get an that's attempt okay. Tonight. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Girl's not in a rush. Um, but yeah, this was a really, really fun match. It's always nice to see Mo. I love his music. <sighs> yeah. Good times. Good times. So we ended up going to intermission. And then we came back, and I missed talking to people because Mel wanted protection in the smoke pit. You're such a whiner. I am. That's what such I am. Such a whiner. Just, I'm just going to go up by myself now. If I die, I die. No, I can't do that. I need to be... No, what, if or, I die, I where die. Was, where was Eric? We, need, we should have Eric protecting you. Yeah. Kids beef. Kids, 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 beefy. He could, he could throw a punch or two. <laughs> Love you, Eric. Intermission. <laughs> we come back and we get a rematch of what we saw a month ago, and it is Ginha versus Cat Von Hees. Yes, the Bruchador, as I like to call him, the British Luchador. <laughs> Uh, Kat gets the advantage early, just tossing Ginha around the ring. Uh, she mm -hmm. gets a leg drop for one point. Uh, Ginha does fight back, gets her on the mat, and like steps on her hair and pulls up on the arm. Just, just, and the ref has to break Rude. it up. Yeah, uh, mm. Kat, they end up on the floor. Cat just chopping the shit out of oh, Ginha. Yeah. Oh, yeah, those were thudders too, man. Oof. Yeah. Um. Later in the match, Cat uh, hits combination kicks into that spinning back fist, and then picks him up. Some Moen drop and the sent on for two. Uh, Ginha does fight back. Gets a gets a combination. Gets a jumping hook kick and gets a two count. Uh, he go he hits the thrust kick. He goes to the top, but Cat rolls away on the dive, and then she hits the power bomb. Follows it up with a pile driver, and then spikes him. With an angel's wings dropping him on his head for the win. Yeah. Get that win back, girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can pay for screwing you over last time. Yeah. I'm glad you got a real picture of him, too. Yeah, I liked the picture last time, but I didn't have his social media by that point. So I couldn't. Get I was going to die if you put on another ridiculous little cartoon one. <laughs> I was looking for a little British luchador somewhere, but I couldn't find one. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Um, this was fun. This was fun. I was cold. I was still warming up from outside, <laughs> running back in from this. But um, this it's always a privilege and a treat to see Kat. I love watching her just because we don't get a lot of ladies up in this end of the woods for whatever reason we just can't seem to get them but man does she make up for it stunning beautiful woman coming out here and just kicking ass and taking names boy howdy mm -hmm. did she earn this win back she beat the crap out of this gay she did yeah she did. it was fantastic but that the, the spike at the end the spike at the end also concerned me I think I sat yeah. there like this for like a good couple minutes until he got up, and I'm like, "Okay, he's moving. We're good." Yeah, yeah. I was I was a little worried for him. I'll say that. And he was moving pretty quick right away, so I was like, "Okay, I think we're good." Yeah, but man, pile drivers, man, they're making a comeback. They really are. Mm -hmm. We move on to your main event of the evening. It is Son of Irish versus Rush Singh in a return match. From the last mm -hmm. uh, Norwood Legion show. Mm -hmm. um, during Raj's entrance, when he's wearing a very stupid orange hat. Um, I'm sorry. Like, dude, that hat looks stupid. Um, Soy, uh, Soy Boy and the ref are fighting over this over, over, Soy, uh, over Soy Boy's stick. It was really funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. He was holding it like a wiener. Come yeah. on now. <laughs> It was great. Um, so last 
time we were here at the Norwood Legion at the end of August, uh, mm-hmm. Raj cut a promo saying he wanted a no disqualification match. Mm-hmm. Like Mr. Send of Irish. Yes. That's what I thought we were getting here. I thought so also. It really wasn't. No. So, um, Raja talks. So, the start of this match, Raja talks sideways from behind to start the match. Very confusing. Very heel. Very and then heel. he puts the stupid hat over the head of Son of Irish and beats him up. <laughs> um, I will say, though, from that, we got some pretty funny faces from was, Son yeah. of Irish. <laughs> Yeah, Raj catches the running cross of Soba at one point and uh mm-hmm. hits and fall away yeets him across the wearing just Yeah. Um He flew that day. So Raj beating him up and then he decides to, decides to wedgie him. Yeah. Second wedgie spot of the night. I thought one was enough, but I guess to the people that really hate Son of Irish, this is funny. I don't. Yeah. So up. I, I'm cheering for the heel in this, so I just go, oh, god damn it. Um, it goes for another the funny spot, though, and Son of Iris sold it really, really good. Oh, dude, the face from Son of Iris was great. So good. Yeah. Um, Son of Iris stops another wedgie and hits his hard back up with the face and follows up with a harsh looking sling blade. Mm-hmm. Um, he does get it, eventually get him into the corner and hits that lariat through the going through the ropes in the corner. Mm-hmm. Dropping Raj and hits that Eddie Guerrero sent on back in and gets a two, to Raj and gets a two count. Um, Raj gets a pump kick and a lariat to the back for two. He then hits the inverted suplex stunner, but can only get two. Uh, yeah, just some great back and forth. With these guys, uh, the end of this match comes though. Son of Virus gets off the shoulders, uh, but the ref and go he goes to attack Raj, but the ref gets in the way. So, son of ours, what slaps- is it with Smalls? By the way, this is the second time that he's done that, where he's clearly been in the wrong spot and he has to awkwardly get into the middle of things, making it like look really super fucky. Mm-hmm. So, son of ours slaps the ref, so the ref kind of goes out of the way, and then Raj hits him with the super kick, but then the ref just throws the match out and says Raj is the winner by disqualification. I was super confused by this because I thought this match was no disqualification. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I wish I wish that there was someone besides whoever is currently doing it. Someone in charge. Not even just in charge, but just someone monitoring everything. Like, someone having some kind of organization so that when things are said or done, that their the continuity is upkept from show to show because this is what's going to bring people in. They're trying to do it with this match. They're trying to turn this into a feud. The problem is, is that there's zero follow up coming from either one of these guys. If I don't see a promo for whatever's happening next time, because they said it was going to be something, but like they said, it was this was supposed to be an ODQ, so we didn't. Really Maybe the next one will just be a regular Degula match, too. I don't know. But I need follow-up. If you want to be the the main reason that people are here and are cheering, do a little work for it. Like, am, am I mistaken? Because, like, I follow a lot of TNA people. I see them very active on their socials, both in regards to their work and in regards to their personal stuff. They're cutting promos on the damn show. We can't get that here because there's no Tron and no video thing there, but like they're trying to make this something that people are interested in. So maintain my interest. If I missed the first show, what about this show made me think that there was anything going on between these two? What about this show is going to make me think that there's anything going on in the next show? Give me something to chew on in the time that I need to wait for the next match. And then that will enable the company to get competition for seats. 
there's no reason why there should be empty seats in this house. This show was phenomenal. Yeah, it was a pretty, it was, there was a lot of people there, but there's still empty seats and probably could have filled a little few more. There should be standing room only. Mm-hmm. It, the, the shows that are coming out of RCW are starting to dip back up. They're coming along really nicely. We just got to get people to have a regular reason to come month to month. And it can't just be the lazy route that top talent takes where it only posts its mass cards like a week to two weeks before the show is happening. Like you guys are taking that route and doing monthly shows. That's cool. But like you aren't top talent. You're not on Triller TV. Make it worth my money to come in and see these guys fight because I want I'm coming regardless. But like make me invite other people. Make me go to my friends and say, oh my God, you cannot miss the next rcw show it's son of iris versus raj impact superstar raj and they're having what are they having andre go ahead and announce it because you haven't said it yet so yeah raj gets on the mic after says i won by dq no 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 these people deserve better and raj says he wants five more minutes of son of irish uh son of irish says you want five more minutes that sucks for you i'm done for the night and he and he just says screw this i'm done Hmm. I'm a chicken shit, so everybody comes back out. Uh, and he says when he comes back, he wants a 20-minute Iron Man, no disqualification, no countout match. Mm-hmm. Then he also says if this ref screws up them up again, he's gonna fight him. And it's Ian Smalls, so I really hope he screws up again so that Raj beats the shit out of Ian Smalls. So that's all I want. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I definitely would have probably preferred Ben to be in this match. Down but... with Smalls. Down with Smalls. <laughs> Down with Smalls. I was fine with everything happening in this match until that particular spot because once again, it made no sense. He just kind of suddenly stumbled into the way. And it was just like, what did you just do? Did you have a stroke? What the hell just happened? Oh, like what? Yeah. But again, I'm hoping that this match happens and I hope that whatever promo Raj cut was being recorded. I saw, I think I thought saw Matthew recording it. I I hope it was recorded and it's posted on their social media because that would be an intelligent thing to do. Well, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it anywhere. There's some free advice right there. You guys make this something to watch. Post that promo. If he's not going to do it on his own time, post the one that he did when you paid him. Yeah, and the other half is we don't know when this match is happening. Because all Raj said is when he comes back. Oh, he you mama jamma. What the fizzy? Fizzity- mm. He did not say the next show. Which if it's will next be month, on- then you're not doing anything in between then. Why should I care? Again, I don't know. It might be his impact schedule might have him out for that that weekend. I don't know. It didn't say, but it didn't guarantee us next month for this. He said the next time he is here. Oh my God, you're right, too. My yeah. God. Yeah. So Come we'll see. You guys, please, please. Yeah, they, if this they isn't next month, do something, anything to show us that this is still a thing and show us yeah. that we should care about it because you already dropped the ball. With the Cody Cody feud. I was so disappointed how that just started a fuse and fizzled out. Give me something to chew on. Erg. They had, they had the big match at the Hungarian show. The big match, the opener. Yeah, the big yeah. match. Which it was a great match. I'm not gonna lie, it was a great match, but it wasn't a pop-off match. That's essentially what they they sold us on. That's what it was. Because the feud has since ended, clearly. If that was the pop-off, my God. Their, their antagonizing shit that they were doing at Kingsway was far better than the pop-off. That's disappointing. They did announce that they will be back on October Friday, October 11th for Thanksgiving yeah. Showdown, I think it's called. I don't remember. I don't remember. Name. Something to do with Thanksgiving something. Yeah. They tend to rhyme things. Do they? They do tend to rhyme things. 
Oh, uh, bush, 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 bush. I'm looking for it right now. Uh, Thanksgiving Thunder. That See, does not rhyme. It doesn't rhyme. T T T T. All the T. That's what I mean by rhyme. All the T. All the TTs. All the TTs. Well, they associate with TT. All the TTs, eh? All the TTs. <laughs> yeah, so they're back <laughs> October 11th. Andre. Pardon? Overall, the show. What did you feel? How did I, you feel? I about had the a show? great time. I had a great time with the show. I thought I, I, I almost everything well. delivered for me and just, just yeah. it was a great time watching professional wrestling with my friends. Yeah, it was just a really good, fun night out. I had a really good time. We got to see um mama and papa irish mm -hmm. i was also very happy about that and also in the main event at one point a son of irish ended up on daddy's knee it's true we got to we get to see eric we get to see eric for the first time in a while yeah yeah he was at the show well we like i see him more than than you do because he lives pretty close to me and he always delivers me weird and wacky shit <laughs> he dropped off that diet coke oreo thing for me to try the other day that disappointed me greatly yeah oh, Melba getting disappointed. Melba is continuously disappointed story of my life much she <laughs> might be getting even further disappointed later this week but that's uh, that's a story for another part of the for another show oh god yeah whatever hurricane is stirring up down there stop it yeah Whatever global thing I need to freaking do, what what do I need to fight? Who do uh, I need, you need to pay? You need to learn rain. You need to learn how to do rain dances and stuff. And no, don't I just need to really nicely ask the right government to control the weather? Just stop it for a few days, delay but it. Then, but then you have to talk to China, and nobody wants to talk to China. Mm. My Jim Crush is Chinese, maybe. I'll see if he can put in a good word. There you go. <laughs> well, it is time to get out of here. We've been here for almost an hour. You can find me on the X at that can guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that can dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk or on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk. Uh, you can also find us for all our Japanese wrestling content over at A Plus Productions on Facebook or A Plus Productions.com. They have their sports feed, their entertainment feed, and their wrestling feeds. You can subscribe to one, two, or all three of those feeds, depending on what you want to listen to. You can also find me over at our local establishment on twitch.tv slash our local establishment and uh, in Instagram and TikTok at OLE Podcast and YouTube.com slash at our local establishment. Uh, or you can find me over there doing Marvel Talk on Saturdays. Looking like going forward, we're going to be Saturdays. Or if we get the gumption to us to do a super late night uh, Wednesday show, we'll figure it out. But we're right now we're scheduling it for Saturdays unless we say otherwise. So check out Marvel Talk. I got the all off long. We're going, we're going through the entire series. It's either going to be me. It's going to be Ed, or it's going to be me and Ed, or it's going to be uh, one of us with other people. We don't know. It's whenever we can make the crossovers work and get the show out and up to all of you. I want to give one more big shout out to our, our boy Mike the Ref over at Backbreaker Video for simulcasting all of our stuff. Thank you so very much. So you can check him out youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. You can also find him live over at twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref for his AEW watch alongs. Um, every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay-per-view Sunday. You can also find him playing games over there uh, every other day of the week, and also on those days sometimes, too. And you can find him, uh, the replays of that, over at YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker underscore game. We're going to find content from him, Mr. PJC. Uh, this little guy right here, Jules, little dude right there, or Jules, who's hiding in the United States right now, I think. Um, he's hiding from us in the United States. He won't come to RCW shows. He's hiding from us. What I mean, like he's, hell, man. he's hiding from us. He's hiding, hiding I'm under the seeing him. Yeah, I want the family jewels back together. Come on, man. Let's go. Sit go. Back. Come on. Let's go. Family jewels. We need their leader. Um, and uh, they're freaking guests. Okay. Kayla J. <laughs> Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. You okay over there? I hit my mic trying to do the J. <laughs> Tranquilo, my guy. Tranquilo. Tranquilo. Mm -hmm. oh, Melville, where can they find you? 
So if you're wanting to follow a Melball, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Melball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishment's programming, Japanese Wrestling Update, every Friday with this guy at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know via social media. Uh-huh. This Friday is going to be a pre-recorded episode again because not only is the beautiful, hopefully natural start supposed to be here, being that we get the hurricane to chill the frack out, um, we'll also be attending the Love Pro Wrestling Show where we'll be seeing Jack Pride take on Mars the Specialist, which we missed last month. So we get it again. I'm excited. Um, last man standing. Yes. And their continuity is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Um, you yeah, you can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We are going to be hopefully pre-recording an episode, hopefully, being that she doesn't lose power, hopefully, on Wednesday. So we will have something for you, hopefully, on Friday, being that glorious, glorious chaos does not reach the shores of Florida. Yeah, it's really up in the air right now. Let's hope Uh, not. Let's hope not. Let's hope that they just miss entirely. Or just it just chills out and goes from a three to a one and just doesn't inconvenience anybody with its presence. That's too much to hope. It's a light rain light no light rain shower. Yeah. Yeah. If you have to throw some hail in there, throw some hail in there, but like chill out. If you're wanting to watch some real Canadian wrestling, you can go to their Facebook page where you can click the link to their Eventbrite and get some tickets, or you can get into the know with some of your favorite local wrestlers and you can contact them directly to see if you can purchase tickets from them. As uh, we were saying, the next show is going to be October 11th, Thanksgiving Thunder. Thunder. Feel the thunder. I love that song. Anyway, Andre, my trusted friend and colleague. Do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to thank thank y'all for all so much for all for the great support. Uh, please, uh, with the Russian backbreaker video with his hundred member boxing talk, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share us out. Tell your friends, family, and uh, just peppy little people that happen to uh, promote parks. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. I was talking about parks. Hello. I was talking about parks. I'm scared. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. We're going to have to have a conversation. That being said, I am your Mel Ball. And over there is Andre, the weirdo. Whoa. We will see see you next time. Mm -hmm.